Hey everybody, my name is Chris and welcome to my channel. Boy, it has been a minute since I did a haul video. I think it's been five months since I've done a video about fragrances that I have collected in the past several months. Today's video is a little bit different. I have a little bit of PR. I have fragrances that I have purchased myself. A lot of the PR that has been given to me, fortunately, I have been enjoying. Some of the PR just wasn't up my wheelhouse, and so I will be passing along some of those bottles to you. Now, this isn't an inclusive list. September was a bad month for me. I kind of went a little bit ham. I bought a lot of fragrances in September, and some PR has that's been given to me in the month of September. I'm not going to show those fragrances that I just don't have a lot of experience with. In other words, if I haven't worn it a handful of times or tested something a handful of times, I'm going to save it for another video at another time. And with that, let's just dive right in. I think I'm gonna start with the PR that actually worked for me. And it would help if I brought those bottles down. <laughs> Okay, so the first few bottles that I will talk about are from a relatively new brand. I touched on this a little bit in my recent top 10 niche fragrances for fall. This fragrance house is new. I think they started in 2020 and they are called Maasai Parfums. And they are a French brand. The UK distributor reached out to me on Instagram where I'm much more active and asked me if I would test out a few of their products. I said, sure. I was able to choose which ones sent to me. And because I am a gourmand lover, I chose one called Destin Desange right here. And it was an immediate love. This is precisely the type of perfume that I love. It is a vanilla based fragrance, but it has a lot more going on. There is chocolate in here, there's orange, caramel, vanilla, patchouli. To me, this is a vanilla orange pound cake with a little bit of chocolate marbleized inside, drizzled with caramel. I absolutely detect the chocolate for at least the first couple hours and then that fades and then it is this vanilla with some subtle orangey undertones with caramel. Tonka and a little bit of patchouli. This sounds really thick and heavy and if you like fragrances like Lyra, if you like fragrances such as Vini by Frank Boclet, which I love, you would absolutely love this one. It is long lasting but it's not a powerhouse and it's very decadent, very well blended. I was so impressed with this fragrance that I wanted to explore the house further and so when I looked on their website, I noticed they had a coffret. It's called the best-selling coffret right here. And it has five or six of their, one, two, three, four, five, best sellers in these 20 ml little travel sprays, which I adored. I thought it would be a good way to get to know the fragrance house and see if there's anything else I wanted. Now I will tell you that I had to write down the notes. I'm gonna put the notes down here. I've tested each one of these at least a handful of times on a blotter and worn them each a couple of times. I definitely have some favorites and then some fragrances that just, you know, they're just not my, they're just not the type of fragrances that I gravitate to, although every one of them I can tell is made nicely. So let's start with the ones that I loved the most. This one is called Jauhara. And this one, oh my gosh, if you hate orange blossom but you like vanilla, you might love this fragrance. This is a really deep, well-executed orange blossom with vanilla and amber. It's very ambery and a little bit of citruses at the top. This kind of reminds me of, it puts, this is in the ballpark of Ruby and Vanilla Neroli by EBK. They're both very, very well done, well-executed orange blossom fragrances. They're not the run of the mill, very heavy, very luxurious. And either one of those I think would do well year round. Another favorite of mine was this one. It's called Wood. Oh, I love this one. This is an incense woody vanilla. I'll put the notes up because I, I don't have them memorized, <laughs> but an incense wooden vanilla. This is gorgeous. If you like vanillas that aren't very sweet and that have a heavy undertone of frankincense or incense, this is gorgeous. This is the full bottle that I plan on purchasing. The next one, what are we gonna do next? Let's see. Princess to Guy. Oh yeah. So this is a citrusy, this is a grassy, citrusy, floral fragrance. Let's see the notes. I didn't write down the notes. I wrote down citrusy white floral with a touch of grassy freshness. If you like the one and only Intense 
this is similar to that, but you don't have that grape juicy, I get like a grape cola when I smell that. This is much more elegant, much more well blended. This is quite beautiful. I forgot how much I liked that one. Very, very lovely. The next one, which one do we have next? Symphony d'Amour. Oh yeah, this is a fruity musk, a fruity musky amber. This is similar to, if you like fragrances like Herba Pura, you would like this. This one's not as nuclear. This one doesn't punch you in the face. I'm not a big fan of Herba Pura because it's just too much for me. It's just too overpowering. This is kind of a little bit toned down version, but um, that type of a fragrance isn't my favorite but at least I can tolerate in this one, whereas Herba Pura was just way too much for me. And the last one, and I really, 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 really like this one as well. It's called 66 Avenue. This is really nice. This reminds me of a Baccarat Rouge 540, the extrait version. It's a little bit deeper. The almond note isn't as prominent, but it is that woody, sponge sugar, ambergris, concoction, very heavy on the saffron. So saffrony wood, ambroxany, sweet perfume. Let's see, what did I write down? Two, oh, there's two types of wood, ambergris, oak moss, and musk. Yeah, and this dries down. The ambergris really comes out a lot more in this, so it's a little bit on the salty side. So the performance probably depends on your skin, but if you've been here before, you know I absolutely love Baccarat Move 540 and the Extra to have both. So if I didn't have either one of those, I would definitely be picking up a bottle of this, particularly since he has so generously given me and my viewers a nice discount code. But since I have those two already, I think I'm fine with what I have. So this is a lovely way to explore the house. And the last one, which was probably my favorite, I don't know, definitely one of my favorites is Oud Sakura. When I originally ordered the Coffret, uh, the USPS equivalent of the Postal Service went on strike, so my order was very, very delayed. And as a courtesy, the gentleman who runs the Fifth Scent which said he would he would throw an extra bottle in for me. I was able to choose. And the one I chose was called Oud Sakura, even though Oud is a tricky note for me, but they had recently come out with this on their Instagram page, and it was just like this bottle surrounded by cherries, and I'm just, I love cherry fragrances. I haven't got sick of them quite yet. I was willing to take a risk because some ouds I like, some ouds I don't like. This one turns out to be, I love this fragrance. This is a clean, strong oud. Some ouds go screechy on me, a lot of ouds. I don't like skanky or animalic ouds, so this is a strong, clean oud. This has cherry incense. The cherries are not overly sweet. They're just kind of dusted with spices like nutmeg. There's saffron, maybe cinnamon in here. It's a little bit woody. Besides the oud, there is sandalwood and it never goes sour or bitter on me because there's some sweetness in the base. I think like tonka, vanilla, and it has a really decent performance. I would say a solid four to six hours. I would, I don't overspray my oud fragrances. You could probably go ham with this one and get, you know, a solid eight hours. I tend to under spray fragrances and it's perfect because I've been able to wear this to work and I've actually got compliments. Some of my coworkers said it smells like something a man could wear as well. So it's very, very unisex, a perfectly unisex fragrance. I'm super happy with this line and the distributor of these fragrances in the UK was kind enough to give my subscribers, my viewers, a 30% off code, and I will link it down below. I believe it's the Perfume Nest 30, and that runs until October 20th. So if you're interested in checking out the brand, a discount code really helps, so. Okay, so the next PR that was sent to me that I actually enjoy is a bottle from M. Mikalef, and this is Soleil Passion. This is a very fruity, very light, watery, fruity floral that really reads warmer weather. So if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, you are just coming into the summer months, or if you are in some of those areas in the Southern part of the States or the Southern parts of the world where your climate is a little bit warmer, then this could be a year round fragrance. For me, this is a little too delicate to wear year round, but an absolute one I will definitely be wearing in the spring and summer just by the way it's composed. 
It just kind of reads late spring and summer. This is one that you could definitely wear in the hotter weather. There's just something very delicate about it. It's almost as if you had water, like a spa water that had strawberries, that had orange and pomegranate. Pomegranate is the main note. So imagine spa water with these fruits that have just been marinating for a day. So by the end of the day, the water is infused with all these delicate, all these fruits, but the fruitiness is very delicate. And that's the kind of fruitiness I get in here. There are some watery florals, lotus or water lily. It's one of the two. And it's just a very delicate, I think there's a little bit of sandalwood in the base, so it's very delicate fragrance. I don't think, every once in a blue moon, I will pull like something fruity, something citrusy in December. So I might just keep this out just in case I need a freshie because I love wearing all my really heavy fragrances in the winter months. But I think this is going to get more use in the summer and it'll perform better because it just gets too cold here to wear this in the winter and expect it to perform more than four hours. And then next, the last PR that I really, really enjoy is called Saboom by Teo Cabanel. I have purchased five or six bottles of Teo Cabanel. I think it's a fantastic brand and they happened to reach out to me on Instagram and asked if I would like to pick out a bottle and I had pretty much purchased all of the ones that I really wanted with the exception of one, I was doing some sample swap over the summer and I was, I can't remember who gave it to me or who I swapped with. I was given a sample of Saboom and I liked it immediately because I am a big fan of Stargazer Lilies. This is a, to me, this is a floral vanilla. I think some people might consider this a salty vanilla. This is a floral vanilla with some salt. So uh, this smells, I think the, the main flower in here is a sand lily. And I don't know if I've ever smelled a sand lily, but I have smelled many, many stargazer lilies. I love when I get a bouquet with the stargazer lily. They are very strong. They're very deep. They're very spicy. So it's a deep kind of a vanilla, sensual, spicy flower. And that's what I get in here. So I get a very strong lily. You have to love lilies, especially stargazer lily, that type of lily vanilla and there's a little salt in here. Now this is strong. So this is one that I don't want to over spray because it, this is a heady fragrance. This is strong. You know, this if I over spray this, it's one of those that I'm just not going to want to wear in the heat. I have to be careful with this. So this doesn't really scream winter to me. I typically like to wear my florals, like my vanillic florals in the spring. So this is really more of a spring fragrance and not something I would wear on a scorchingly hot day. Very strong, long lasting, and I look forward to wearing that in the spring. So now let's go to some fragrances I purchased myself. One is Itab Libre d'Orange, and this is called Bijou Romantique. I purchased a couple of these because I heard they were being discontinued and I wanted to grab them really quickly. This is a florally amber, in the same vein or in the same ballpark as Shalimar. So if you enjoy Shalimar, you would almost certainly enjoy this one. This one to me, I don't get that burned rubber. I don't get that burned rubber, burned fuel that I get in the Shalimar EDT that I just don't like in the beginning. So this doesn't have any of that. It has a nice powderiness to it. It might even be a little bit more powdery than Shalimar. It's a little bit earthy uh, from patchouli or vetiver or maybe both. And it has really good performance. So. This one I, I enjoy, I'm glad I picked it up. The next one is Remarkable People. This is a like. I don't love it, but I like it. So it has promise. This is a, how would I describe this? This is like a peppery sandalwood, spicy peppery sandalwood. This one is very unisex. Some people might think it leans a little bit masculine. It, it's a solid like and performance is, I would just say moderate four to six hours. So that one I will be keeping with me. Now we're back to some PR that just didn't work out for me and I'm really sad. And the first one makes me very, very sad because it's a beautiful fragrance and it is a, a luxurious fragrance. It is, would be considered a luxury brand. It's a new brand and it's by Bietus, which is a French brand. And this one, they reached out to me and so they would politely and very kindly and graciously said they would send me a bottle and I picked it out based on the notes. And as we all know, that just always, 
that doesn't work out all the time. And unfortunately, this was a case where it didn't work out. And I'm, I'm just so sad about it because it's a beautiful fragrance. And this is expensive. I think this is sold at Neiman Marcus and on the Beatus website. This is called Gardens. It is a woody, it is a woody, fruity floral, but there is just, I like 90% of it. There's just something in here that just, isn't me and just something that I wouldn't reach for even though it's very delicate all sorts of um, fruits raspberry black currant maybe something else and several types of floral and and I would say the floral that I get the most would be like a rosy jasmine and it has a it is very woody it has a soft woodiness to it so it has a woody dry down it's woody and musky in the dry down I just it's just not for me. I tried a couple times. I wore it, you know, two or three times. It just wasn't for me. And I've made a teeny, teeny dent. And the thing is, I'm happy to pass this on to anybody, any one of you, any one of my followers as a thank you. Hopefully there's somebody that, that would absolutely come to love this and enjoy it. And maybe I'll go up to my local Neiman Marcus and smell the rest of them and see if there's something else for me. So if you're interested, I have three more bottles that I'm going to be passing on to, no, two more bottles I'm gonna be passing along. So in the comments section, just let me know which one, one, you're interested in. It's gonna make my life so much easier when I'm figuring out who gets what. The next three fragrances were fragrances that were sent to me by uh, Beauty Live, which is an online retailer and they sell authentic fragrances at a discount. Similar to, you know, Fragrance X or Perfume Net or FragranceNet.com. So they reached out to me and said I could pick any three I wanted and I went by the notes again and that always do, that doesn't always work out. So the first one, I know there's going to be lots of people that love it and maybe it's just where I am in my fragrance journey. I'm just not into shampoo-y fragrances anymore. I used to. Last year I really liked shampoo-y fragrances. I'm just not really into them anymore. So this is called Pure Petal. Oh, what is it called? <laughs> this is called, this is by Isi Miyake. This is called Lo de Si. Pure Petal de Nectar. So the bottle's really cute. I looked at the notes, I thought maybe I would like it. I'm not really into the Isimiyaki anymore. I've just way past that DNA, that fragrance DNA. So this is a, an, a very nice shampoo-y, watery floral. So this has pear and, let's see if I can remember what's in there. Pear, I know there's honey maybe some rose. Yeah, I think this this is something that could be very, very loved in the right hands. It's just not something that I'm into right now. You can still tell that there's that Isimiyaki DNA. So that's in the background and then add a little bit of pear, add a little bit of fruits, pear, honey, rose, maybe peony. It's just not what I'm into right now and the bottle's really cute. <laughs> It was very affordable. I want to say it was around $35. So if you're interested in this one, let me know. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's going to love it. Okay, so the next one that I picked out, I still haven't decided where I'm at. It's an Amouage, and this one is Amouage Interlude. Boy, I love this gorgeous blue bottle. And Amouage is one of the houses I absolutely love will not blind buy from, but since this was something that I was able to pick out, I didn't, I bent the rules a little bit. You know, homage is hit or miss with me. Uh, some homages I lo absolutely love. I love Honor Woman and I love material. And then some homages I just didn't like at all. I don't know what to think about this one. This one is a typical homage. It's just all over the place. This has got some notes that if I were a perfumer, I would never put together. But Amouage just tends to do that. It's very citrusy in the front. Let me get my little, um, my little, my little handy dandy blotter. I would say it's an interesting. It's just, I'm interested in it, and it's a like. I don't hate it. So it's got. I want to say this one is the one that has kiwi in it. So it's very fresh, very fruity, fruity, and then there's something else right at the top. Uh, maybe it's incense. So it's so odd. There's like fruit. There's like a fresh fruit, kiwi and incense. I, they just don't go together. There's some other citrus, maybe like lemon or grapefruit. I like the fragrance more. Even though I do tend to like fr citrusy freshies, I like this more on the dry down. There's rose in here. It's very woody. 
you know, the incense is still there. It's a little ambery and it's very strong. This one was very, very well priced. I think this one on the website was about $130. So very, very well priced. So this one is not a love, but it's not a hate. So, um, and I will be giving this a little workout over the winter. I just think that this might do better in the winter. And then the last one I picked out from Beauty Live is Dylan Turquoise. This is the EDT, I wanna say. Yeah, this is the EDT. This is pleasant. You know, I like freshies. I like citrusy, musky freshies. So this is a citrusy, musky, woody floral. There's a pepper, it's a little peppery in the beginning and it had an interesting fruit in it. I think this is the one with guava. So it's very fresh very watery, kind of aquatic, heavy on the musk and the dry down, and a touch soapy. So this one is, I like it. It just might get a little bit redundant because I have a huge collection of freshies. So um, for that reason, I probably won't be reaching for it. So if you're interested in Dylan Turquoise, let me know in the comments below. And there was one that I actually bought myself that I forgot about and that is Dear Polly by Wilhelm. So I first heard about this from Anna Lauren. I was doing what I do a lot is commuting and listening to YouTube videos, <laughs> YouTube perfume videos on my drive. And the way she described it, it just caught my attention. It just sounded like it was right up my wheelhouse. This is a tea-based fragrance. This is a very strong citrusy tea with a heavy ambergris note. So. I tried it a couple times in the summer and because the ambergris in here is very pronounced and it turns smoky, it turns smoky on me in the dry down, this is one that I knew if I oversprayed this in the summertime, it would make me ill. So I just didn't wear it. And this is, to me, this is more of a cold weather fragrance because of that. The ambergris in here is very smoky. It comes out smoky on me. And for that reason, I think it's just better in the colder months. So it starts off as like a very fresh, a citrusy, fresh green tea, very fresh, very light. And it takes a quick turn that ambergris comes out in the dry down and it becomes, you know, salty and smoky, almost like a black tea, a lot deeper, a lot darker. So this one is definitely a like and to be worn in the colder months. And with that, I think that is it for my recent haul. Again, let me know in the drop down comments which bottle you're interested. I'd just like to move that along to someone who's really going to enjoy some of these generous PR gifts I was given. Um, so Beatus Gardens, we have the Eau de Essay Pure Sunny Nectar. Oh my goodness, that was a perfume bottle. And then the last one is Dylan Turquoise, the EDT. So let me know in the comments below which one you'd like. I'll just choose three of you. And if you're interested, and again, if you're interested in exploring the House of Maasai, I will leave the coupon code below. That runs till October the 20th. And, and if you're still with me, I forgot the very pretty blouse was given to me by Lily Silk. It's gorgeous and I'll leave the, uh, I'll leave the details below. So that's it. Thanks for sticking around, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.